think it all comes down to the internet, the digitalization and the network behind it. It's two things we have to keep in mind. The first one is the change of business models. So uh, traditional media companies have to reconsider how they can sell their products uh, because they put everything online um, available for free for quite a while, more than 10 years, and users get used to that. So they expect to, to get the things for free. And now you have to start changing this uh, business model and uh, reinventing the monetization of, of uh, content on the digital platform, which is quite a challenge. So reinvention of business models, transformation of business models is one major challenge, I guess. The other thing um, is related to the content itself, which means uh, we have the traditional journalist stuff, we have uh, products that have been transferred from the, from the real analog world into the digital world, but we also have citizen journalism, we have the chance for each and everybody to just write, put information on the web, share information, create new stuff from mashups and whatever you, we can think of. And so this is kind of a democratization of content and the opportunity for everybody to, to share information and to become a, a producer of information, not just be a consumer. I do feel that there is still a space for, for traditional journalism because um, helping people to uh, stay uh, uh, online with things going on in this world is not so easy uh, today. And traditional journalists do exactly this. So they, they offer uh, a packaged version of our world, um, be it what's happening in business, be it what's happening in politics, be it what's happening in culture, society. And that's why a lot of people still relate to the traditional media brands on the internet, because they know they can rely on what they get there and they have a packaged version of what they need to know for, for their daily life. The other thing is, it's a complementary uh, relationship between blogs, citizen journalism, um, the, the democratized uh, public sphere on the web on the one hand side and traditional journalism on the other hand side. I think we need both and they are very much complementary and go together well um, and a lot of media uh, institutions learn that they can combine it. The Guardian in Great Britain, for example, does it in a real uh, uh, extraordinary way. What the journalists did by using the internet, using social media to uh, elaborate on, on specific issues. Um, the, the scandal of the parliamentary expenses, uh, for example, uh, has been a crowdsourcing um, movement on the web where the Guardian um, uh, collaborated with uh, the readership uh, to find out what um, British Parliament members spent money on for private things like carpets, plants, uh, furniture, whatever you could think of. You can all look that up on the web and the readers helped to, to make that public and to organize the information. On the one hand side, people still um, look for traditional media brands, uh, well-established media brands, because they're credible, they have a track record of quality uh, information um, uh, providing, for example. On the other hand, I guess we can observe the, the starting point of a development where um, personality brands uh, turn out to be uh, become more and more relevant. So it's not the, the media brand itself, but it's the, the single journalist that uh, becomes more and more important to his or her um, audience. The journalists uh, can, can really uh, establish their personal brand by using social media, by using Twitter, by being on Facebook, being on Storyfy, really aggregating a material um, that uh, serves a specific community with a specific interest and um, uh, earn a lot of credibility by doing so. I guess what, what we can observe uh, or have been able to observe for uh, like one and a half years now um, regarding the experience of the New York Times, uh, the Financial Times in Great Britain, the Wall Street Journal, 
um, shows us there is a chance to monetize um, quality-oriented journalism online as well. But it needs a like, cultural tradition of the expectations of, of the users, because they have been used to for everything free online for more than a decade now. Now you have to change that, and that's uh, quite a bunch of work uh, you need to do. On the other hand, if we think of like buying a Starbucks co uh, coffee, yeah, you're quickly at like five francs you spend for one coffee. If you look at the newspaper, like the New York Times, like uh, the NZZ, like uh, Tagesanzeige, whatever we think of, then it's hard to not understand that all the work, the research, um, people, a professional team have put in there should be worth to, to pay for it. Uh, so sometimes it needs, it, it helps to, to just make this comparison to understand that uh, what you pay for a coffee, you should be able to pay for a newspaper and the content.